I'm a big fan of themed restaurants at Walt Disney World. The f- Sci-Fi Diner is my favorite restaurant at Walt Disney World. Ooh. So it would make sense that I would also probably like the 50s Primetime Cafe. That makes sense to me. But alas. Uh-oh. For some reason, it just never comes together there for me. And we will go over that in this review. Uh oh. So 50s Primetime Cafe is a table service restaurant in Hollywood Studios themed to the 50s. You walk in those doors and it feels like you're at your mother's house. I guess it would be like your grandmother's house. Uh, set in the 50s. All the props are from the 50s. They're like the real TVs and just like to the nines. Yeah, big it's 50s. tube TVs, like wallpaper and like old appliances, mm-hmm. what have you. It's all themed very well. Mm-hmm. The waiters and waitresses play along and they pretend like they are your family members who are uh, just serving you for lunch or dinner, whatever it is. Um, so they act really casual, you know, they're your Uncle Gary or Cousin Kathy or whoever they are. Uh, and they're serious about it. They give you the silverware and they say, make your table, no elbows on the table, and nothing unusual. So you can't have uh, your technology. If you bring your cell phone out, Uncle Gary's gonna be like, what is that? Put that thing away! We don't have those in the 50s! And the food sort of matches the theme, right? So it's like... Home cooked meals from the 50s. There's like fried chicken, there's mashed potatoes, green beans, meatloaf, pot pie, pot roast, sundaes, milkshakes, dessert. Yeah. So that all goes along with the theme of the 50s. Yeah. There's also, if you're not eating at the restaurant, there's also a walk up bar where you can just go enjoy a drink in that theme. So that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't have much to do with anything, but it's there. I like that one. It's a cool lounge. It's cool little bar. Lounge. The it's tune-in lounge. The tune-in lounge. So here's where it starts to fall, starts to fall short. Oh, okay. Because, I mean, to me, it all sounds pretty good. It sounds like a I good know. time. I know. You think you're, you're set up for a great time. Sounds like good food. Sounds here's like where it's time. falling short for me. Uh-huh. <laughs> the last couple times. Uh, both times I went last, we've been seated at tables that were not really part of the theming at all and I would say like maybe only 30% of the tables are like part of the theming like in like a kitchen section or like a cool looking section yeah a lot of the tables feel like they're part of the kitchen like it's a little island shoot off like a breakfast nook you might find Mm -hmm. um with little cubbies and shelves with knickknacks and everything but a lot of the tables are just kind of off to the side and you can still see those people at their nice tables and you can see the props, but you feel removed from it. Yeah, they get their own like little TV with like a 50s reel playing the whole time and uh, we get a wall, a blank wall. Yeah, I feel that because one of the last times that you went, I was there and that was actually the last time I went, which was um, September 2018. And I we talked about this kind of recently Yes. Uh, when we talked about our worst dining experiences, check that video. Uh, but we were just sat next to the wall. There was a window, but the shutters were down. And if you peeked through the shutters, you saw like the side of a building and an air conditioner. And it's like, okay, so I can only look this way. And there's another weird table that's just sat next to a wall. So then if you look kind of straight forward off to an angle, there's the good table with all the cool stuff. So we didn't have much to look at and... We felt like we were just an afterthought. Like, ah, where can we stick these people? Yeah, Animal. just another Over there. another table thrown in. Yeah. And so despite that, I went back very recently in February 2020. And I had basically the same experience. We got sat at a table that wasn't part of all the cool stuff. And it's just kind of, it's kind of lame to be sat there. The difference is, like, it's still, it's nice theming. But there's, like, a chance that you won't get as good theming but like at sci-fi yes, every table a, is a good table exactly i was gonna yeah exactly oh, I'm like, sorry. I'm no sorry. no you're, you're, <laughs> that's fine that's, that's yeah, a great point they're all facing the same way you all have the same thing to look at the ambiance is surrounding you 
so you're not stuck next to a weird wall or you're guaranteed to be part of the theming in sci-fi drive-in. Yes. The wait staff at 50s Primetime are pretty good. From what I have experienced, they've all been like 100% in character. They've made me laugh every single time. The, the last time that I went, I, we did have that guy where he just did literally the same spiel for every single table in our little room. So it was funny the first time, but then the next couple times... Ugh, it got old real fast. Yeah, every table he sat was the same line. How was your last waiter? He was okay. He was like a little... He went like in and out. Like sometimes he'd say something like punchy from the 50s and then other times you'd just be like, all right, you want to refill or, you know, just like something like that. He did he, he did. he did some funny things. I'll give him some credit. He brought me... I drank like two full waters and he brought me a whole pitcher of water then after that so I wouldn't have to keep asking for it. So that's what funny happened stuff like us. that. Yeah. Shane and I went in... January of 2016, Shane was pounding these Diet Pepsis, and so he brought him out a giant pitcher of Pepsi with like three straws stuck together, so it was like <laughs> a super long straw. And um, we had just gotten engaged, so we had our engage buttons on. So Uncle Gary, that's who it was, that's where I got that name from, <laughs> he sat down at the table with us and he's like, all right guys, I just want to give you some marriage advice. She's always right, blah, 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 you know, that traditional kind of, ha ha, the wife is always right, and no, don't do it, whatever. Um, and then after we paid the check, or we were about to pay the check, I guess, uh, he brought out a park map and he said, this is your first wedding gift. I want to be the first one to give you a wedding gift. And it was a park map with all the bathrooms circled <laughs> because Shayna drank so much and we still have that. So it was like a really good experience with Uncle Gary, who was hilarious. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, another waitress won way back in 2012. Uh, it was the first time I went with my family. It was raining outside, so we came in and we had little water droplets all over us. <laughs> the waitress sat us down and she unfolded the napkins and put them on my <laughs> stepdad's head and his shoulders and he just sat there. And that was really funny. And then he was doing spitballs at her and she was like, mm. This lady also, the table next to us, <laughs> somebody at the table next to us got their phone out and they opened Facebook and they were scrolling through it. And she's like, no, I don't think so. Put your toys away. It's dinner time right now. So he puts his phone up on the shelf. And she comes by a little bit later. And he's like into his meal. He's not paying attention. She picks up his phone and posts a status on his Facebook. Like, haha, boogers or something stupid. And she's like, you can delete that later. So I, people might get like, oh, don't get into my personal stuff. But I thought that was so funny. So I've had really good waitresses and waiters. Except for that last guy we had. He was he was good initially until we found out that's just as good as he is. So um, the wait staff, I would say overall positive. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Really no complaints about them. Yeah. The food. Well, the food is hit or miss. Mostly miss. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Um, it sounds really good. You're reading through the menu and you're like, oh, it's home style. On it's paper. food. It's all oh my God. On paper, it sounds it sounds really good. A lot of meat and potatoes sort of stuff. Vegetables and butter. Butter. And I will say, I really like the... We, I think we both like the fried cheese appetizer. The that fried cheese, that's what I was going to say. Is like, if you get one thing, get the fried cheese. Yeah, if there's one thing to get there, that's it. It's cheesy, garlicky amazingness with like a fried breading around it. I don't even know what else, how else to describe it. That's, that's all that's it really it. is. <laughs> that's good. And it's delicious. Yeah, it is really good. I've gotten two different things. So I've gotten like a, a salmon Caesar salad, which was fine. It was ex what you would expect. It was fresh and everything. But I've also gotten the chicken pot pie twice. And I remember in 2012 being like, this is the best chicken pot pie I've ever had. But in 2018 when I had it, it was like almost flavorless. I had to add a lot of salt. Uh, and it, it was really disappointing. And I, I got the combo platter, which had a little bit of everything on it. And I mean, there's nothing to write home about on any of those. They're all okay. Fried chicken is probably the best, yeah. but meatloaf and pot roast were meh. I liked the pot roast when I tasted it off of Shane's thing, but it might've been like super, super good because my pot pie was just <laughs> not. <laughs> so, yeah. The vegan option, Alicia, my girlfriend Alicia got the vegan option. She got the vegan option and she said it was really good. So if you're vegan, weirdly enough, this is the place to go. They what have... is it? 
She got the Cousin Harold's Vegetable Garden. And it was like a fancy salad with vegetables all done really well. Which, not for me, but if you're... It's probably good, but... A vegan. Sounds boring. Yeah. Not for me either, but... So, price. Talk about the price. Cost-wise, I would say most of the entrees are about $25. Chicken pot pie was $24. I think pie roast or something was just $28 that I saw. Yeah, that's about the average. $25 for okay food. Plus tip, plus tax. Yeah. Plus drinks. I don't think it's worth the price just for the atmosphere and the fun. I think yeah. they need to step their food game up, especially if they're going to charge that much. Um, Sci-Fi only charges how much for that burger? The drive-in barbecue burger at Sci-Fi Diner is $21. And I mean, I will take that over anything I've ever had at 50s prime time any day of the week. Yeah. I have to agree. It's cheaper. Tastier. Yeah. So you're getting a better overall experience for your price at Sci-Fi. Because their waiters are good too. That's a different video. Yeah. yeah. Save that for yeah. a more positive video. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's tough about 50s is that there's something so easily to compare to in, in Sci-Fi Diner. Like it's so comparable in like theme and price-ish that it really stands out that 50s is worse. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because it's a it's a good theme and they got a good shtick going on as long as you get a good waiter. Yeah, it's a good idea. Sit in a good place. Like it's it's not a completely negative place. Like I'm gonna continue to go back there every couple of years probably just to see how they doing. Mm -hmm. But like it's, it's not... so middle of the road for me because there's good things and then there's bad things and that's that's what reviews are. <laughs> yeah. That's how that works. Well, hopefully we've described them individually enough yeah. that you can get an idea for yourself whether or not you should go. Mm -hmm. But I think Sci-Fi Diner every time. And I do. I go to Sci-Fi Diner every time. I'm... You do. So overall, I'm thinking I'm just going to go middle of the road. I'm going to rate it 5 out of 10 milkshakes. I will rate it... I was gonna say six. Oh. Out of ten. It's still good. Pictures of cola. Let us know in the comments what you think of 50s Primetime, if you've had good experiences, uh, what your star rating is, and um, your unit of measurement for your star rating, because honestly, that's the most important thing. I think, yeah, if there's one takeaway we can all agree on, it's that that is the most important thing about youtube videos yeah you need to rate it out of something fun or else the review doesn't count so like this video consider subscribing to rope drop disney and we'll see you real soon this is cola cola where are you from the south pop i don't like pop pictures, from pictures, Buffalo. Of, pictures of pop it's called pop 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 or soda i like soda soda pop Ain't nobody calling it cola. Cola. Hey yo, can I get a cola? I don't know what's happening. Yeah, right we now. need to, we need to wrap up the video <laughs> real soon. We're talking about. 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 We're talking about.